Good morning, everyone. My name is Kathy. And I'm David, but you might have guessed that. We're here to talk with you today about how we got to where we never thought we'd be. It all started several years ago as we were preparing for retirement. Now, that's a difficult concept. Uh, we, we were kind of scared of it. Uh, and so we were planning for something different. We wanted to travel, discover new places, explore new places. But we didn't want to do it in the conventional touristy sort of way. We wanted to get inside a place and really learn about it. We also wanted to utilize our skills to do something useful. And we wanted to challenge ourselves to do something difficult, something we'd never done, something to take us out of our comfort zone. I had always wanted to join the Peace Corps. And when we thought about how we were going to be able to combine the elements that we were looking for in retirement, as David pointed out, the more we looked at Peace Corps, the better the fit seemed, and that we thought Peace Corps would be the method that we could realize our goals. Now, how many of you are familiar with Peace Corps? And do we have any returned Peace Corps volunteers in the audience? Peace Corps was created in 1961 by President John F. Kennedy and has operated over the last 54 years in well over 100 countries and with more than 220,000 American volunteers. Right now, it's operating in 64 countries with around 7,000 volunteers. Peace Corps only goes to countries where it's been invited to participate and invited to help with a host nations, uh, some issues it's dealing with. We uh, applied to Peace Corps in the summer of 2011 uh, as, and in the box on the application that asked for a country of preference, we marked no preference. That was part of the adventure, part of the mystery. You know, Peace Corps does different things in different countries. Among the programs it operates are teaching English as a foreign language, which we had both done uh, in our earlier stint in Japan. Uh, and it uh, also does health education and secondary health care. It does agricultural consulting, small business development, youth development. Uh, so it, d it does a variety of programs. And it also operates with three principal goals. First is to help a host country with a specific technical problem that it wants help with. Second, it wants to improve the understanding of America and Americans by host country nationals. And it wants to improve understanding by Americans of those nations where it operates. So with all this in mind, we applied to Peace Corps in the summer of 2011. And a year later, we were invited to serve in Jordan. Now, neither of us knew very much about Jordan. Certainly, we didn't know anything of the Arabic language or Arab culture in general. So, this was a challenge. My background, as Sam has told you, was in American history and Asian studies. We'd uh, lived in Japan and taught there for several years before going on to our careers. Uh, but this was new, this was a challenge. My background is in microbiology. And for the 17 years prior to Peace Corps, I was the executive director of quality at a packaging company. Plus, we had taught in, in, in Japan. So when we thought about um, applying to the Peace Corps, I thought that those skills between my microbiology background, my teaching experience, and also my business uh, connections, that it would be a good fit for Peace Corps and that Peace Corps would be able to utilize my skills. So off we went to Jordan in the fall of 2012. And when we went with a group of 23 other volunteer trainees, and upon arrival in the capital, we were divided into several smaller groups and sent out to training villages around a central training hub 
outside the capital. In those training villages, we were given intensive language instruction in colloquial Arabic uh, for four to six hours a day, along with lessons in uh, various aspects of Arab culture. We also had homestays. Now, Peace Corps puts all of its volunteer trainees in homes of people who live in the area where, where we're training. And they serve to help teach us the things with real life lessons that we're learning in the classroom. They reinforce what we're learning. So they teach us a lot about, of course, food, culture, holidays, celebrations. They also teach us a lot about how interactions happen between family members, their neighbors, and the community at large. They give, us the, they give us lessons to make sure that we're culturally adapted for our new work, new work environment so that we will be good Peace Corps volunteers. And over the course of our 12-week training, we are evaluated from time to time for that cultural adaptation and for our progress in language learning. At the end of the 12 weeks, we were sworn in as official Peace Corps volunteers by the U.S. Ambassador to Jordan, and then the next day sent off to our assignments all over the country. Kathy and I were assigned to work in the city of Salt, about 20 miles outside of the capital of Amman. There, I was assigned to teach English at a boys' middle school. Children in Jordan are separated uh, by gender after fourth grade, and I taught at a school for boys that ran from fifth grade through 10th grade. I focused on uh, sixth grade. Uh, it, the school was only about a mile from where we lived. And uh, it, it was a very poor, under-resourced school with lots of behavioral problems among the boys. My primary assignment for Peace Corps was to teach English at a university in our town. The expectation from Peace Corps is that after we're in our communities for a few months, we will become more fully integrated and understand how the community works. And with more contacts that we are able to make and we can find out what other programs we might be able to develop and contribute to. For example, at my school, the professors and the staff approached me about coming to teach an English conversation class for them. I also had a student group who um, had a conservation club come and ask if I would also participate in their events. Now, the conservation club was very interesting because we went on monthly trips through Jordan, and David was able to go along on these trips with me, so we were able to explore and discover many more things about Jordan that we never would have been able to see on our own. We went to places that are not very well known, even by Jordanians themselves. So we went to places that were historically important, culturally important, or environmentally important. And we also were able to meet more people because the women who come from the university are frequently accompanied by their family members. So it gives us a chance to practice our Arabic, of course, and to meet many more people in the community and to get a better feel for what the community needs are. Among my secondary projects was the uh, organization and execution of a special summer boys camp that I did with several of our fellow Peace Corps volunteers. Uh, the boys camp was held at a, a retreat in northern Jordan and it was a place where we worked on some of those behavioral issues that uh, I mentioned before that are very common at public schools uh, in most parts of Jordan. Well, we've given you a rundown of how we spent our two years in Jordan, but the important part is, what did that all mean? What did we discover from this, and how did it change us? First of all, and the most important thing that we took away from our two years was a, a new sense of hospitality, generosity, and affection. The Jordanian sense of hospitality is very different from ours here in America. Now, they all see Americans as very warm, friendly, generous, hospitable, but we Americans tend to uh, offer our uh, hospitality in a very planned sort of way at a specific time, on a specific date that's well known in advance. 
we're very, we stick to those guidelines. Hospitality in Jordan is spontaneous. You can just be out doing your errands, walking down the street on the way back from, let's say, the grocery store, and someone will call out to you. The, the furniture dealer down the street, come in, have a cup of coffee with me. I would frequently be beckoned. Mr. David, come in, let's have coffee. Or you can walk down the street to visit a neighbor. And in fact, you're expected to. Come visit. You can share a piece of cake, a cup of tea, a good conversation. There is never anything that is so pressing, so urgent, that you can't take time from your day to share with a neighbor, a friend, a family member, and sit back for a few minutes and appreciate life and appreciate that friendship. It's what I sometimes refer to as the Arab version of manana culture. And that is, was really uh, quite uh, revealing for us. Also, especially, the Jordanians are very warm and affectionate and express affection much more than we do as Americans, especially men. We're used to men being a little bit withholding over here and not really being very emotive uh, and not being demonstrative. Jordanian men are very demonstrative and express affection with each other and especially with children. You, children are showered with love and affection every day, in every way. They're just uh, adored. Even It's not just the kids in your family. You can meet somebody on the street uh, who you may know them slightly, but they will fuss over the kids. And uh, kids being fussed over is a central part of Jordanian family life. Jordanians have larger families than we tend to have in this country. Very common to have 12, 13, 14 children in a family. And families all tend to live very close to each other. Their family members live close to each other. Uh, we lived with a host family and the uh, uh, host family brother lived next door. And in our neighborhood were cousins. Uh, families stay close together, both emotionally and physically. And that's a very central part of Jordanian life, uh, and it colors everything they do. Now, every family is part of a larger social, social organization, a tribe. Tribes are the real operating uh, force in Jordanian society. The royal family in Jordan comes from the Hashemite tribe, and in fact, the formal name of Jordan is the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. And the Hashemites have a special place in the social organization because traditionally, historically, they were very closely associated with the family of the Prophet Muhammad. This has been an influential factor in why Jordan has remained an island of stability in a sea of chaos in the Middle East. But Every tribe has its own sphere of influence, and there are tribes scattered throughout Jordan, and you can tell from a person's last name that, it, well, Jordanians can, I can't. They can tell from a person's last name what tribe they're affiliated with. They know that. It's part of what you grow up with. And uh, these family organizations and the uh, tribes have different realms of influence. Some are, are very active in politics. Some are, are maybe much more into uh, the uh, economic life of the country. Others with different social aspects of the life of the, the nation. Every tribe has its own sphere of influence and every family utilizes its family connections to gain influence or to utilize that influence. In Chicago, they call it clout. Uh, in Jordan, they call it wasta. And wasta is something that you really can't get through life without. It, it helps you measure your progress through life. So these were uh, very important lessons that we learned from Jordan. But what did Peace Corps teach us? Well, Peace Corps teaches flexibility adaptability, 
Be ready for anything at any time. Things can change. Even your assignment, where you go, what you do, and it can change on a moment's notice. So you need to be ready. <coughs> Second, Peace Corps teaches uh, you to be uh, a part of your community. To, you want to be integrated into your community, be a citizen, be a participant. And that is the single most important thing that we Peace Corps volunteers are expected to do. Integrate into the community, be part of it. So in addition to absorbing everything in our experience, being a sponge to take up as much as you possibly can, you need to be a beacon. Uh, Peace Corps volunteers are on duty 24-7 as representatives of America and American culture and values. And there is always, of course, a great interest in where we came from, what we did, who we are. Being a representative of all of that is a very important part of what we do as Peace Corps volunteers. So why are we telling you all this? What's the value in it for you? For us, it was a very important part of our lives that we treasure. It could be for you too. You can explore, discover, and transform yourself and have an influence on others by participating in the Peace Corps. You might end up in a place where you never thought you'd be too. Thank you.